What is up, guys? We're live. Thanks for joining me for the podcast today. Um, I'm pretty excited. I hope you are, too. Uh, we are going to talk about what's right for you. Uh, and, you know, smartphone conversations. Is we're just talking about smartphones and just anything tech, really. Um, but I want to get into this one because there's always there's always room in the smartphone game to talk about smartphones. So we're going to talk about it today with you. So, let me send this out. <clears throat> Thank you guys, uh, the ones that are able to join me live uh, for podcasts. It is Tuesday. And I haven't, I didn't do a live podcast uh, last week. Uh, so, uh, my apologies for that. But I am here this week and we are live. Yes. So, if you're able to join in. Please join in. Please share the podcast. Uh, thank you guys for for getting me over the hump again. You guys, effectively, you guys are you guys are really doing well uh, with <clears throat> keeping me good on this podcast, man. You guys are you have me growing in numbers, and I appreciate it. So, um, just to uh, kick things off here, I always like to say thank you to my my loyal subscribers. Thank you for making the podcast happen because I obviously I can't do it without you guys. So it's always a plus to be able to sit down and talk and, uh, you know, give you guys something to listen to while you're working, uh, whatever, you know, just <clears throat> getting you guys ready for the week, however I need to do, whatever I need to do for you, I want to do it. So I'm muting devices because my phones will be ringing off the hook. Uh, but what's the right smartphone for you? <clears throat> Which one is it? Is there a right smartphone for you? I'm sure. I'm sure there is. There is definitely a right smartphone for you. Uh, but what is it? Where is it? Is it here? Where? Where is that right smartphone? Uh, hey, oh, look down at the chat. There's people in. Hey, how you guys doing in the chat? What's up, Greg? What's going on, Forbes Tech? I see you, man. Hey, everybody, uh, congratulations to Forbes Tech. He is doing his thing. He is. Uh, definitely, definitely winning uh, when it comes to uh, the smartphone game. He's, he buys a lot of smartphones. And uh, hey, uh, Eric is in the house. Sean's in the house. He, uh, just saying congratulations to Forbes Tech. He's um, just passed 500 subs. Yes, yes, yes. Let me see if I can do a hand clap on here or a cheer or something. Yeah, there it is right there. There's the hand clap. There's the cheer. So Force Tech is doing his thing, and I'm happy for him. I'm always happy to promote uh, YouTubers because what are we doing it for if we're not promoting other YouTubers? It's kind of pointless to uh, keep it all to yourself. And uh, I really enjoy helping other YouTubers if, if I can do it in any kind of way. I'm always for helping the next guy out, and I think that's how people should be. So um, I'm always going to say, hey, big ups, you know, to Forbes Tech or whoever. If you make it, you make it. And I think with some of these people that are on YouTube, you will make it. And whatever, whatever your level of success is, whatever you think it is, I pray that you get there. So <clears throat> is there a right smartphone? Is there a, a phone out there that is perfect for a person? Well, of course it is. Short answer is, of course, there's always going to be a phone for someone else. Uh, that's not for another person. Uh, so um, when I look at, because uh, as a reviewer, I get the, the uh, you guys know what the main question is on nearly every video. Some people say off topic, Jay, but I'm sorry, I know this is about a case, but, or is this about your laptop or is it about your Mac or whatever it is, it's about your tablet. What do you think about this phone compared to this phone? And that is just how it's going to be. Even if you're the techie in your family, if you're not a YouTube reviewer, but there's always somebody in your in the family that's the go-to tech person. You know what I mean? It's that person who they'll say, oh, you need to call up so-and-so because he definitely will know the answer to that. Or she will definitely know the answer to that. And some of you are that person. Some of you guys are that person. You're the, you're the go-to tech person. But in my family, it's me. And... um I, I, that's the question of should I buy this <clears throat> or should I not buy it has always remained. And I think that's always going to be like that as long as I'm doing, even, even after I stop doing YouTube, that's just how it is. It's going to be 
a situation where people are going to ask me, hey, you know, I know you used to do that. Are you still interested in doing it? Do you still do it? What should, What do you think about this? It's just going to be that way. And I don't mind it. I enjoy talking about tech all day long, man. I could do it all day long. <clears throat> it is fun to me. It's exciting. And so that's why it's, it's, that's why I don't mind doing it. Now, if I was bored with it, <laughs> I would, I would, <laughs> there, would, there would be something wrong, you know. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely not bored with tech. Um, and uh, I, I think that when a person is asking you, hey, should I buy this or what do, what do, you, what do you think about this? They're, they're trying to get some insight on, on they might be trying to figure out what's the perfect phone for them. So it's important when you're a YouTuber or just a person who's very tech savvy, uh, you you need to definitely be mindful of what you're telling the person, and you're not telling them what you like. Um, I, I ask, Dirk, you know, for those that are in the corporate world, uh, at one, if you're in there, if you're still in there, if you used to be in there, you know what the term probing means, a probing question. Uh, that that terminology is thrown around loosely in the corporate world. And a probing question. You want to you want to dig into the situation. You want to dig into uh, what the person really wants because the right phone for you is not the right phone for somebody else in most situations. Uh, and what I found is that uh, let's just take a OnePlus for example. There are people that actually love the OnePlus no matter what. They will they will stay with that OnePlus forever. They will do it. They they will they will try to convince you of anything in the world. Nope, the OnePlus is better. Nope, the OnePlus is better. Nope, the OnePlus is better. That is just how it is. And I respect that. I don't have a problem with, with people, you know, saying that hey, you know, this is the top of the line, this is what it is. And I just kind of I just kinda go with it. I don't tell people uh, that something that they like is not what they should like. And I think, unfortunately, uh, on the tech community, that's how it is. You, you run into a lot of people trying to convince other people to like what they like. And then you get those battles online. You guys see those all the time. No, no, the right thing is, that, you know, and that that's kind of always going to be there. That's, that's going to be there. Um, that's just what it is. There's absolutely no getting around that you. There's people out there that try to convince other people that their phone is the best phone, and that everyone should buy it. That's just what it's going to be, uh, and there's there's nothing you can do to to stop a person from being that way. And so you shouldn't try. But if a person asks you, "What's the best phone right now for two hundred bucks?" More than likely, when you answer that question, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be answering from what you like. Uh, and it's very di- it's nothing right or wrong about um, what I'm saying as far as the way you respond. But when a person says they like something, uh, sometimes we kind of just start to kind of agree with them. We don't mean to, and we almost kind of coach them into liking something that they don't like. And that's unfortunate because then a lot of people, uh, again, if you're in a certain market, you know what churn is. <laughs> if you guys don't know what churn is... In the corporate world, take a look at that and get your definitions together because you don't want a lot of churn. <laughs> you, you don't want a lot of churn. That's that's not good. Uh, you're basically you're getting things back. You're getting returns. You know, you, you and this comes from a high churn will come from people telling people, selling people the wrong thing, something that's not fit for them. And the same thing can happen. You're probably thinking, wow, Jay, you're getting technical today. But um, I'm having flashbacks when I was in the corporate world. But the the thing is, when you're recommending phones to people, it's what I'm saying is it's very difficult to not put in your own personal opinion. It's extremely difficult, and you know that's where a lot of people end up getting stuff that they don't really like or they just don't want it. So I say to that. Um, Try to, if you can, try to, if you're going to give a person some advice on a smartphone, like that's a, that's a legitimate question. What's the best phone under, and you fill in the blank, that's going to come up to you, that's going to come up multiple times and there's really nothing you can do about it, especially if you're the techie in the household. 
There's absolutely nothing you can do. People are going to come to you with that question and you got to be able to answer it in a way that you're not being lopsided in your answer. So to, to avoid that, um, think of a way to give out those techie answers uh, like that. And then uh, you'll be able to save people from making a wrong mistake. Because in my experience, when I tell a person a phone is good, like I, I, I could read YouTube comments all day. I could read them all day and all I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, man, oh, man, you know, you recommended this to me and it's a horrible phone. I'm like, what the heck? I, all I did was I told you my experiences. And this is this is a big misconception about YouTube reviews. Some people take the YouTube reviewer at his at they take the YouTube reviewer and say, you know what? This is it. This this is the answer that you gave and I'm going to hold you to it. When that's technically not what they should do, they should see it more. They should be a little bit more open about it and not so, you know, direct. I guess I want to say without insulting people because people get offended really easy. Uh, but when you're watching a YouTube reviewer, here's another great example: the Essential Phone. I posed the question on several places: if I could get the Essential Phone for five hundred dollars, should I get it? That's all I asked. And because if you know me, you know I like to keep a conversation going or I wouldn't have created SmartphoneConversations.com. <laughs> so you, I like to keep the conversation going because I want to hear what other people think. I just like to listen sometimes to, to the way people react. And I think that posing that question, now Forbes Tech, he actually has it. There are some other people that have it. Uh, Night Tech has it. And there's other people that are, don't do YouTube reviews that have it. And they all gave different answers pretty much. So who do I listen to? Like in in the perspective of, okay, I have known nothing about this phone. I've never used it. You all have it. What should I do? Who do I listen to? Um, what advice do I take? You, you see what I'm saying? So Forbes Tech is in this live stream, live podcast right now. So I'm going to ask Forbes Tech, if I could buy the phone and you just type in your response in the live chat. Shout out to the, to the replay crew that's listening to this on the download. This is Smartphone Conversations podcast for Tuesday night. It's your man J. Will. We're having a ball so far. So, Forbes Tech, if you could type in there, should I buy the essential phone for $500 or should I pass? It's brand new. It's sealed. I can walk into Best Buy and buy it right now for under $500, maybe about $480, $485 or $495 or something like that. $500. Should I buy it? Forbes Tech, you have it. And if anybody else has it, I, I know Forge Tech has it because I watch his videos, but if anybody else in here who has it, should I buy it for 500 bucks? And if you're listening to this on a replay or if you're listening to this on YouTube, give your opinion. Should I buy it? Now, the polls that I put up on Google Plus and Twitter are the complete opposite, man. They're, they're Let me uh, pull up my web browser here, and, and I'm just going to see if I can, can, can tell you here what the polls on Twitter was. Now, the poll on Twitter... 48%, now this is from 128 votes uh, on a poll that I put up. If I could get a brand new essential phone for $500, uh, should I do it? And it, spell check, you just got to love Twitter. Um, and 48% said yes, 52% said no. And the, the weird part is, I know a lot of those people probably don't have it. So what's driving them? To actually say no. That's what I. That's what I would love to know. Um, so for check for a second, if you're still listening in the in the in the in the podcast, I would love to know should I buy it? And and I'll pose this question. Uh, you know, if you're watching this on a replay, go ahead and uh, you know, you go ahead and go ahead and, and leave a comment down below on what you think. Buy it or no? So Forbes Tech just responded, and I'm going to read his comment. He says, "I would say yes. I really think it's worth between 450 and 525." And see, that's the first interaction I've had with Forbes Tech about it. And I watch his videos. I'm online chatting with him pretty much all the time. He's in the chat that I'm in, and and that's the first time I've seen him respond directly to it. So on Twitter, they say, "Heck no, don't buy it." And I really would like to know what's driving these people to say no. Like, really, if you don't currently own it, what's driving you to say 
No. And that's why I wanted to see the people who actually have it. So Forbes text says between 450 and 525, that's a definite go. Uh, there's another comment in here. Uh, Savelle Cole says, I think it's a good buy because uh, it's $700 phone for 500 I think so. Uh, Gray says, yep, I agree. If I could pick it up for 500 then I definitely would. It's worth a test drive. Because uh, um, I, I, was, I was talking to Night Tech earlier, and uh, he was like, man, they're selling on Swapper for like over 600 So even if you don't like it, which I don't think I'll dislike it, uh, because the hardware is killer. The software is pretty much stock. Uh, I don't do rooting and all that stuff anymore. And when I buy a phone, I like to use it as is. So, um, you know, let me read another comment here from from Chris. Chris says, the people might see a certain spec uh, that they don't like. Okay, yeah, that's a reasonable answer. But the phone has all the latest specs and it has 128 gigs. It has 4 gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 835. It's got it all, you know. So, uh, let me see. Eric says... Um, well, if you can get it from Best Buy for that price, I would say go for it. And keep in mind, if you don't like it, you can always uh, take it back between the return. Well, yep, you get you get. Four, I'm an Elite Plus at Best Buy, but that doesn't matter because cell phones you only get 15 days or 14 days. Even though I'm an Elite Plus, which is I can do returns up to 45 days on phones, it's across the board. We're not letting anybody keep a phone past 14 days because <laughs> they have to recertify them and try to sell them again. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm not a fan of the return policy for smartphones. I try to just sell them off if I can. Um, I would rather just sell it off. But I do understand what you're saying, Eric. Um, that's just not. I try to. I try to measure ten times and cut once. Um, let me see here. So, do I like vanilla Android? Philip says, or features like the Note Eight. Well, see, I have the pleasure of owning all of them, so I, I'm the wrong person. to. I have a preference. I prefer stock Android, if you're asking that. But <clears throat> I do prefer stock. And, and of the stock Android phones that I've used, if it's not a Google device or a Nexus device, I like the way Motorola does it. And I like the way HTC does it. Now, HTC isn't considered stock Android, but their skin on there is pretty much almost close. It's, the performance of their skin is amazing. It's like stock Android almost. So, But if I had to choose... One OEM to make my software, it would be Motorola slash Lenovo because they're about as close to looking like stock and performing like stock as anyone else. And most of their phones that I have, they pretty much get the updates. So I want to go to the Google Plus poll. Um, so again, the Twitter poll was 48% yes and the um, 52% no for Twitter. So let's go to my Google Plus poll that I did. And I want to tell you the results from 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 that one. Uh, a pretty 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 interesting, I should say. Um, let me see some more comments here. Um, Ronald Sims says there are phones for every single price point. However, I never pay full full price for flagships simply because I love deals. And uh, Ronald, I am totally with you. I like deals too. I would prefer to get a deal. Uh, yeah. I think I'm, I think a lot of people would prefer to have a deal on a phone, and the right phone, and the perfect phone, it is out there. So the Google Plus, uh, and this is right in the essential phone because it's a great example. Uh, so I asked on Google Plus, hey, if I could get a essential phone for five hundred bucks, should I do it? Forty percent, or excuse me, thirty eight percent said, and this is from forty votes. There was less votes. Uh, but it's from 40 votes, and it says 38% say yes, 63% says no. So going back to what Chris said, could it be, because I know that the 40 people who voted, more than certain 40 of them don't, you know, all, all the people who voted don't have the phone. And it goes also back to where we see they watch reviews, a lot of people watch reviews, and they count on those reviews to tell them the truth. But listen, guys, um, for anyone listening to this podcast, not just the people in the live stream, a review is subjective. It cannot be 100% objective because um, we're only giving our point of view on it and we're only giving what we think about it. That's just what it is. We have to start facing that. Uh, I like MKBHD. I like um, Forbes. I like all these different reviewers, my Project 13. I like these guys. However, that is just their perspective because there's been phones that MKBHD said not to buy. He'll come out and say pass on this. He said pass on the HTC Ultra, and the Ultra is a sweet 
phone. For the people that actually have the Ultra and had it since launch, like me, they're having no problems with software. They're having great battery life and the cameras and the dual speaker setup. There is way too much to like about that phone. He also said to pass on the Amazon Fire phone. Well, initially I was like, I'm not getting that. But once I got it, I loved it. And there's a lot of people that actually are still using the Amazon Fire phone. So uh, let me read some more comments here. That's pretty much uh, it. Uh, we're all doing is uh, giving our honest opinions. Some of these, anyways. Yeah. So your your opinions are are valid and honest in from your from where you sit. So if you if everybody in this stream was a YouTuber, <clears throat> and I mean you were like me and, and Forbes and any other YouTubers that are in here. You're buying the phones. You're putting up reviews on them. If you're if you're a reviewer, and after you do that so many times, you get a different mindset about reviewing phones. Like for me, there's probably never going to be a perfect phone because I have the ability to get them all. I'm a little bit more overwhelmed than the average consumer. If you think for one second that I'm not looking for the right phone for me, once I find it. Something else is going to come along as a tech reviewer because I'm being told, hey, look, here's another one. The new version just came out. Like, so if you guys know me, you know that the top phone that I like right now, if you're following my channel, you actually know that I think the U11 has the best front cameras. I love the software. The rear cameras can be matched, but they're still solid. I think it's a complete package for me. But the U11 Plus is getting ready to come out, and it's going to be bezel-less, and it's going to be the same phone pretty much but it's going to have a new design. I'm going to want that. You know, I mean, it's going to have a six inch display. So that's the problem with being a YouTuber, having access to a lot of things. You'll never, I'll never find the, the, I'll never find the perfect phone. Um, uh, Phil says, yes, the first Jaywood video was on Amazon Fire phone. I watched yours. Fan of your whole work. I appreciate it, Phil. Uh, the Amazon Fire phone, it's a fantastic phone to me. It's got a lot of features that some phones don't have still today. It's got the dual speaker setup. It's got the four or five cameras on. That thing is awesome, man. It's awesome. But again, it's not for everyone. Could I use it as my daily driver? I sure could because it's small in size, but it packs a serious punch. Hey, Mobile Geese is in the house, y'all. Mobile Geese is here. He too concurs that the U11 is the phone right now. And that's how he typed it out. He says the U11 is the phone, capitalized the, uh, right now. That's the phone to get. And I just feel like there's a phone for everybody. Uh, let me see. Chris says, uh, when you take a trip uh, or out and take it out and about, do you take your U11 or the Note 8 for pictures and videos? Um, I actually take the U11 and the Note 8. Uh, me too, sure, the U11 Plus comes out. Yes, Forbes, he's ready for the U11 Plus too. Um, but I, uh, I'm i primarily using the Galaxy Note and the HTC U11 for everything right now. I mean everything. The iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus, I'm using those to just do the review period because if you guys know, I'm not really big on iOS on a phone, but I love it on my iPad Pro. I have the 10.5 iPad Pro. I, I got rid of the 9.7 Pro. I, I had the 9.7 Pro since launch. It came out. I now have the 10.5 Pro. And I'll have this until the 11.5 comes out. Oops. Did I leak that? <laughs> did I leak it? Oops. The iPad Pro 11.5. Oops. Sorry. Um, I can tell you, though, there is a perfect phone, folks. There's a perfect phone. Because in the eyes of the beholder, the phone is perfect. I, you know what I you know what I dislike, and I won't I won't use the word hate because it's a strong word. I dislike when I really like something. Or let me let me give it to you this way. Don't you don't you really it doesn't really get under your skin when you really like something, and then here comes these people that'll say, Oh, that's trash. And I mean, I'm I'm one of the more human, realistic reviewers. I don't I'm not afraid to show my emotions. I'm a real man. If I need to apologize, I'm gonna apologize. I don't, I don't freaking care about stuff like that. And if something excites me, I'm gonna show that it excites me. So when I see something I really like, and I've validated some points to myself that it's really good, I really dislike when people come along and say, "You should have bought the Galaxy so and so. You should have bought the iPhone. Da 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 da. You should buy the the V whatever." They don't respect what you could consider to be really good and they try to convince you that it's not 
because of what they're holding in their hand. I, that is the silliest way to get a person to be interested in something. Because phone comparisons can only go so far. Again, all the phone comparisons that I do are from where I'm sitting, not from where you're sitting. And I always tell people, leave a comment if you have both. I try to say that in, in videos where I'm doing two phones because I want people who have both phones to comment. Most of the time, I can see straight through when someone's lying in a comment or trying to mislead or omit. You can tell by the way they're commenting. The iPhone sucks. I get so tired of hearing that. The Galaxy, the Galaxy sucks. The iPhone suck. Those iSheep, those people don't have the devices, man. They don't have them. They don't have them. Let me read some of you guys' comments. Uh, yeah, when I, George says I, re, I reacted when they were bashing the U Ultra. Uh, he, said, he says I reacted pretty well. And yeah, I held my composure, but the, most of those people don't have the U Ultra. So it's kind of like, what? You guys don't even know. Um, I think Motorola, Amazon Edition phones are new Amazon phones. Sadly, never another Fire Phone. Yeah, the the Motorola, that deal that they have, and not just Motorola, they've got a deal with, with the, uh, the Amazon phones, but I know what you're saying, though, uh, and I respect that. I guess I could pretty much agree with that. There are a lot of phones that are considered Amazon phones and, you know, the Amazon Editions, and you know what? Amazon is smart for that because Amazon wasn't trying to make money off the Amazon phone, the Fire Phone. They make money off of content, Anybody who's paying attention, you know that when you pay your cell phone bill, that is how the companies survive. You think about this now. All of us as a community, we could bankrupt all these companies just like that. All we have to do is not pay our bill for one month. All of us across the board, just don't pay your cell phone bill. If the entire world who has a cell phone didn't pay their cell phone bill on that due date, we could have unlimited data for $20 a month. With unlimited text and talk. Couldn't we? We control the market. We control the market. Remember. So. If all of. I'm not. No. Now let's be clear. I'm not saying to go do that. Pay your cell phone bill. It's responsible. Um, you, that's what you should do. Take care of your responsibilities. But in reality. If you. If you ever done stock before. Uh, and you ever played the field. In the corporate world. You know. That we are actually in control. So when we complain about the pricing. We created that pricing. So the, the it's falling on deaf ears when you tell OEMs, you need to drop that price, da 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 They're, It's falling on deaf ears because we're creating the price because we bought the last model of it that cost more or the same price. So if we were to, everybody were to stop and just say, well, I'm not paying my cell phone bill this month. You think they're just going to shut off everybody's service? If we go on strike, if, if, if the entire customer base for Verizon and T-Mobile and AT&T and Sprint did not pay their cell phone bill for like when the bill is due and they let it sit like for a month, we could negotiate. We want $20 a month unlimited talking text at the current speed. We want, we don't want to be capped either. We want $10 per line or $20 per line unlimited talking text, no caps. I want full data speeds throughout the billing cycle. We could get it, and the reason we don't have that is because we don't do we don't do that. Overseas, you guys both know that they may be paying full cost for the devices, but the internet speeds in their billing accounts is a penny and a drop in a hat compared to what we're paying, and they're getting faster speeds. They've got five G overseas. Let me read some of you guys' comments. Savell Phil Cole says, "People that push." Uh, like that usually f are feeling like they didn't get their money's worth out of the phone and they have uh, they have to so they won't ever yeah c correct that's their insecurities uh, Chris says their release date for the v30 and is a v30 a v30 plus um, there's rumors about the v30 but I'm not posting any yet because they're too inaccurate uh, hey Jay what do you think about the moto x4 coming out Android I think the moto x4 is nice but I'm I just think it's crazy that they're releasing kind of the same phones, you know, and they're close in price. That's Ronald asking that. Um, Cricket uh, be better off. <laughs> uh, we could control the market, George says, uh, only if we all act in a concert uh, and, and with each other. And, and that's how you do it. You can't go on strike and then there's people that's scared to go on strike. 
And again, disclaimer, Jay Will is not telling everybody to not pay their cell phone bill. You be responsible and you pay your bills. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're obligated to do. You need your smartphone for communicating with your loved ones. But if we all did it together, we could drop the pricing on our phones and we can have all these. Like the phones that like, I won't name any OEMs directly because I don't want them to think I'm trying to say that they're doing something wrong. But there are phones out there that cost a thousand bucks, seven hundred bucks, and they have the same specs as phones that cost less. Why is that? Well, those companies market more, so they got to get the return on it. And so, for ever, for every, um, for every phone that's, for every ten phones that's sold through factory through through the OEMs, you got to believe that at least three to four of those are coming back in return. And depending depending on who the company is, reverse that, and they're only keeping two out of those ten, and eight are getting returned. You see? So Chris says, uh, are they making a U11 to 18 by 9 ratio? Uh, I believe it is. I believe it's going to be 18 by 9 ratio, but that's still that's still up in the air. So there's no final things on that yet, uh, but we shall see. But the right smartphone it does exist. And like I said before, the perfect smartphone for me at this moment, I named the U11 as smartphone of the year as of August 2017. We're now in September 2017. You want to know my answer? The U11 is still the smartphone of the year. I don't pay attention. To, well, I pay attention, but I couldn't care less when a person tells me, oh, it's not even the end of the year yet. How are you going to name the U11 the phone of the year when the Galaxy Note is here? That just means that the the Galaxy Note is the phone of the year to that person. That's what they need to understand. The U11 is the phone of the year for me still as of 2017 September. People have been asking me that, and it's kind of like they'll ask it on a Galaxy Note video. It's like, wait a minute, you know, I love the Note. I love the Note. It's a fantastic phone. But I'm still using the U11 for 99% of the content that's being created, like videos and stuff. That's all the U11. That's the U11. There's a bunch of pluses to every phone that I have on my desk. It's a huge, there's a huge amount of things, but the U11 at this moment is like a flawless, it's not flawless now, don't, don't get, I shouldn't say that, but it checks all the boxes that I, I need to make me feel comfortable. Now, the Galaxy Note 8, obviously, I'm carrying both of these phones. So some might say, well, Jay, you love the Galaxy Note 8. Why aren't you saying that that's the phone of the year? The Galaxy Note 8 just came out. It, it can't be the phone of the year for me yet. We still have until December. And we still got the V30. We got the Mi Mix 2 that I need to review. We've got a ton of other phones to, that I need to review. The Galaxy Note 8 obviously is in the top three. So here's a, here's a unique comment. This is an eclectic comment that I've the first I've ever heard of this one. Shallow Unicorn says, I'm trying the U11 out right now. It's a good phone, except for the price, the cost. I think the U11 is priced really fair compared to, think about it this way. The Galaxy Note, the V30, all of those cost two to $300 more than the U11, and they have the same internals. They have the same internals. So, uh, that, and I'm not saying shallow unicorn is wrong. I'm just saying, I from where I sit, I don't see it being overpriced. I think they're doing a one plus. The one plus, you can get the U11 for five ninety nine right now. All the colors, five ninety nine. If you look on eBay or something like that, you probably can get it for less. But I would tell you to buy direct from the OEM so you don't have problems with uh, warranties and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Shallow says. Oh, okay, okay. So Shallow didn't say that he thought the price was bad. He said he was abbreviating. He said, trying the U11 out right now. The U11 is good, especially for the cost. Okay, so he changed it. He let us know that that's what he thinks. Okay, I was going to say, man, the U11 is priced fantastic. Um, Savelle says, I love the Note 7. If I can get it, it give problems. Yeah, Note 7 was amazing. Yeah. So correction on that, the, the, the Shallow wasn't saying that the U11... Uh, price uh, is bad. He he was abbreviating, and I'm a little older, so I didn't understand what that abbreviation was. I thought it said except, uh, but he said especially the price. Okay, there you go. Now we're on the same playing field because the U11 has everything internally and killer cameras. Do you guys know my fav- one of my favorite Samsung devices? 
I know if you follow me, you've heard me say it before. It's, I still have it. It's the Galaxy S7. I use the Galaxy S7 for live streams, for recording all of my footage on my channel once my Canon broke. And it did its thing. The U11 has replaced it. The U11 has fantastic cameras. Battery life is great. Everything about it, it's the phone for me. The Galaxy Note 8, it's a phone for me. Um, I use the Galaxy Note 8 every freaking day. I'm using it right now, and I got... It's called, so crazy. I'm actually using the U11 for this for this live podcast right now. I, I was gonna, I normally do it on my Mac, but I just had the U11 sitting here, so I was like, I'll just use the U11. Um, so, and I got the Galaxy Note in one hand and the U11 in the other. I, I like both of these phones that much. I'm like really a tech junkie. I... I, I just really like I like the phones, man. And again, I wouldn't be running smartphoneconversations.com if I didn't like smartphones. It's just what it is. I like it. I think it's I think it's a good way to release stress and, and have fun. Um but the Galaxy Note 8, man, oh my gosh. Love love this phone. Love it. Love it. It is a fantastic device. Some people think that when I say now the U11, I don't think I gave it a ten in my review. Just like I gave, I think I gave it a nine point five in my review. I'm gonna have to go back and look at it again. But I gave the Note a nine point five too. So they're equally matched. The Note offers more in the S Pen Suite. We're not gonna get into a comparison or battle. Some people feel like the phones shouldn't even be compared. Those people are a little naive. If you if you think the Note can't be compared to a, another phone, no disrespect, but you're a little naive and you don't know much about reviewing phones. If you think that you're not supposed to do that. I'm still trying to tell customers every avenue of what they can afford or what they what the options there. That's why I compare phones to the Note because I like the Note. I want somebody to try to take down Samsung. I did a live stream last night, I think I did, with the um, the LG Stylo 3. Plus, somebody take Samsung out, man. They're killing everybody with this Note line because they've convinced everybody that the Note line is a premium device that is in a class of its own. And the only way it can be in a class of its own is with that price tag and then the S Pen. That's it. The Galaxy Note is a fantastic device. I tell you no lies. I've got the Note in the right hand and the U11 in the left hand. I'm going to get into some more comments here. Uh, Greg says, I, yes, I have the iPhone 6S Plus uh, for my personal device. Uh, but my work cell phone is a Galaxy S7 Edge. I keep switching out my cell phone to try others to keep coming back to the S7. Yes, the S7 is fantastic, man. One thing that Samsung really let me down about for making the Galaxy Note my perfect smartphone, they took away the ability to live stream directly from the camera app. Now, some of you guys might say, what's the big deal about that? I can stream in 1080p from a phone. You couldn't do that before on any other phones. You could do it on the Sony line, but they took away the function too. So Samsung took it away, man. They took it away, and the last phone was the S7 to do it, and oh, was I mad about that. So Eric says, hey, you know, I see I agree with you on that because, whoa, the comments sped up. Uh, Eric Drummond says, I agree with you on that. That's why one of my main things is trying to do my channel right now, uh, find uh, three flagships, compare them to each other, and three budget flips. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to compare them. Uh, Ronald says, I'm surprised Apple hasn't made a note or iNote. Ronald, oh my gosh, dude, I'm totally in agreement with you. Somebody try to take on Samsung. They're letting Samsung have this arena. And I mean, I'm not wanting Samsung to fail, but I want more options. The only option I have right now is the Stylo 3 Plus. And the Stylo 3 Plus doesn't have the internal killer specs that the Note has. And the S, the functionality of the pen on there is about half of what you get on the Note. So somebody needs to bring it. Get, show, the, show Samsung you can bring some thunder. The iNote is a sweet name, by the way. Ronald, you better patent that before Apple does it. The, the Apple iNote. Oh, man, that will be sweet. HTC has, um, HTC has one that will beat up uh, uh, one of the best UIs. Uh, this day, I didn't get... So, yeah, uh, Savelle says, that, yeah, the, the HTC U, U, U11 or just HTC UI is fantastic. Uh, Huawei read it with the main... Yeah, Huawei can do it too because the Huawei skin, I actually like the Huawei skin. It's very fluid, very fast. It's a fantastic OS. I really like the skin that they're using. Not the OS, I like the skin they're using because they're using the Android OS. But there is 
way too much to like about the Galaxy Note 8. And I think other OEMs might just be afraid they're going to drop the ball. Samsung came out with the Galaxy Note and they took a chance and it paid off. Um, George says, I agree with Shallow. The Mate would be a great with a stylus. Absolutely right. LG needs to take a, take on the note. They can do yes. LG has the juice. People Ness and Forsyth. People make jokes about um, make jokes about LG dropping the price on their phones, and it's unfortunate because the Moto Z Force Two Force. I walked into T-Mobile, and that phone is freaking five hundred dollars now. That phone just came out for seven hundred bucks, and it is now five hundred dollars. You know how many people are mad about that? I would be I would be extremely frustrated about that. I would be perturbed. How are they going to bring this phone out? How are they going to bring it out? And then um, two three weeks later, they dropped the price to five hundred dollars. They did the same thing with the G six. I was mad about that because I spent six fifty on it. And another thing, another reason I was mad about that is because I spent six fifty on the G six. Then LG sent me a G six. Now I reached out to their PR team. And I said, hey, are there any review units? They're like, no, we'll duly note it. You know, LG always sent... Now, I'm not knocking LG. They send me nearly every LG phone that they have, just the flagships. Um, they were doing it. Now, I haven't gotten a V30 yet. I'm not big enough. They sent it to all the other YouTubers. I'm not big enough. So, hey, whatever, I guess. I'll come around. But with the G6, I was mad because I had a G6 I paid $650 plus tax for, which came to $704 or $708 or whatever it was. Then they turn around and drop the price to five hundred and left it there. It's permanently at five hundred. Oh man, that that really upset me. So there's competition there for the note. LG can capitalize on it. I like that Apple I Note though. Uh, yeah, the the Moto Z two Force is five hundred bucks right now, and that trust me, that's going to be a great buy for five hundred. That phone, that man, the Moto Z two Play is probably you know the Moto Z two Play is a monster device. When I bought that phone, I fell in love. I used the Moto Z2 Play to record all of the Galaxy Note footage when I was at the at the event in in New York. So the Galaxy Z2, the the excuse me, the Z2 Play is a boss phone. George is actually ta- typing on his Z2 Play right now. Yeah, the Z2 Play is a fantastic purchase. Uh, Philip Vaughn says Apple will do a Note in about five years. It will be magical <laughs> at this. <laughs> And this is coming from an Apple fan. Yeah, I'm an Apple fan too. I, I love Apple products. I have a lot of them. Uh, V30 released in 2018. Let's hope that LG doesn't release the phone in 2018. That would be a bad move. That would be a very bad move. And I, it'll be sad. Because is the V30 even ready? I mean, come on. Release it already. Um, You got patience. Smart. Yeah. Eric says you got to be a little bit more patient because... When the G6 dropped to 500, there were some people that was perturbed. Now the now the, the Z24. Think about this now. Motorola's latest and greatest flagship, the Moto Z24, is now only 500 dollars, and I believe it's only going to be 500 dollars until uh, September 28th. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's going to be I think it's going to be on sale until the 28th. So again, do not quote me on that because I don't know for sure. Um. But the Moto Z2 Force, uh, the Moto Z Force Edition, the second gen is what their name is. The Motorola Moto Z Force Edition, second generation, is five hundred bucks. And if you're on T-Mobile, you can do twenty dollars a month. That is fantastic. That's a fantastic. You don't even have to come out of pocket, but twenty bucks for the down payment and then tax. So sixty for me. $61.50, I'm out the door with the Moto Z Force Second Edition. That's a bang em up price. That's a bang em up price. It's a totally a doable price. Now, you guys know, um, now I know you're probably wondering, Jay, what happened? <clears throat> well, <laughs> what had happened was. <laughs> You know, you might get ready to tell you a story with that. You're probably thinking, Jay, what happened to your Moto Z2 Play? Well, I had to make a decision to move some things around, and I wanted a laptop. I want, Well, I know I'm being greedy. I wanted another MacBook. And I know I had a MacBook already. I know I got this 5K Mac, and I have the iPad Pro. But what happened is I, ha- I had to make a choice to get rid of something and I, because I wanted the new iPad 
10.5 and I wanted the 12 inch MacBook at the same time. So the Z2 Play was my newest device that I partially reviewed. So I'm going to revisit it again. So you will see a full review for the Moto Z2 Play, but you'll also see a review for the Moto Z Force Second Edition. You will see that. So that's what had, what had happened was. Uh, but I can tell you folks, the right smartphone does exist. It exists. It's just that simple. It exists because you are the one that's going to tell the world what you like. You're, you're the deciding factor whether something is good or not. That's on you. It's not on us. So if you do have a phone that you enjoy or you just think it's the most the fabulous phone out there, enjoy it, man. Don't worry about what I say. Don't worry about what reviewers say. And I think that's what's happening with with the uh, essential phone. When certain phones come out, certain phones come out, certain YouTubers tell people not to buy it, and people don't buy it. And that, that really frustrates me because there's a bunch of phones out there that are actually really good. Like, again, I'm not going to take shots at any one website. You know who they are. They A lot of websites will get a phone and they'll never review... They will never review a pocket-friendly phone. They just won't do it. Now, isn't that unfair? Yep, Savelle, you're right. That's, that's why I say this in the eye of the beholder. Isn't it unfair that some, some reviewers will not, they refuse to review a budget phone? Isn't that crazy? Like, a pocket-friendly phone. Why wouldn't I tell a customer, hey, you know, you really should be thinking about spending this, this $175, this $175 on the on the V20 instead of the, Why would I not tell a customer that? Isn't that wrong? That is so wrong for me not to tell the customers all the options. I mean, hey, okay, I could be wrong. So tell me if I'm wrong, but... Okay, if you think I'm wrong, I respect that. But what I will say is, why is it I'm wrong if I'm trying to save you some money? Some people say, well, you're getting paid by these companies to say that these little budget phones are good. Let me tell you something. I wish I was getting a check from them. <laughs> I'm too busy buying the phones and giving them away. So um, I, I know how much money, you know, you know how much money I spend at the post office shipping off stuff that I've given away? This month alone, I've passed $200 just in shipping fees, and I'm still shipping off stuff. So it's not about the money. With me, it's about helping somebody, man. I'm giving away phones and stuff on my channel. I'm buying the stuff. I want you guys to have the right, the right pricing on the phone. I want you to have the, the phone that's going to suit your needs. And if that phone only costs $49, then so be it. Some people are too caught up on trying to impress others and say, oh, I got the new so-and-so. Yeah, I got that new so-and-so, man. That's how it is in the tech world, though. In the tech world, you got to you gotta be able to accept the fact that, okay, um, yeah, I, I don't have the latest one, but I'm going to get it. And that's the, that's the, that's the unfortunate part of being in the tech world. If, if you are a reviewer, here's a... Here's a Here's an honest fact. I normally do hashtag fun fact on, on some days like Monday or fun day Monday. Sometimes I'll do hashtag something. Here's a hashtag for you. This is a hashtag honesty. Some of the phones, I don't want to buy them. I don't want to buy them because I would rather just keep the money in the bank and just do a vlog on it. Because as a reviewer, I feel obligated to buy every freaking phone that comes out. And it gets overwhelming. And there's a fact. There's an honest fact about me. I don't want to buy every smartphone. Don't you think if I could get review units for everything, I would? Why is it as a reviewer, when you get a review unit, it's a bad thing? I posted a blog and I and I put on there our review. I even done a podcast. Our review units, a bad thing. And it could be and it could not be. Uh, let me see here. I'll read some of you guys' comments. Pray for them, Jay. <laughs> um, uh, well, you said, Jay, we create the demand, ask for the latest and good. Yeah, we do create, we do create the demand. Um, we, we're doing that. But anyway, that's, that's something that I live with. As a reviewer, 
if I was getting review units, like go look at channels that get a review unit of everything that they want. They got they have more content and they get the content out first. I used to hate on them. I'm honest enough. I used to hate on them because I used to wonder how they did it. But when I started getting review units, I was like, oh well, shoot. I'm saving some cash. I'm still making money on YouTube if I want to, and I'm giving the people what they want. We should be trying to save money. As a YouTube reviewer, I'm not going to tell you to go out and spend a bunch of money on a phone, but I'm also not going to lie to you when it comes to you looking for the right phone or something that's suitable for you. I'm just always trying to... And some people think it's fake, but for those who have met me in person, if any of you guys have met me in person, I'm exactly the same way in person, man. I'm all about for you. I'm all about getting you the best deal. I'm all about being nice. I'm all about having fun. I'm not a young guy anymore, so I'm done running the streets. So I'm a family. I'm all about family and love and stuff like that. I'm not ashamed. that Real men should not be ashamed to express themselves. Now, if you come across too soft, that's another story. I'm from Jersey. You don't want to come across soft. But at the same time, when you get older, you got to you gotta prioritize. And a smartphone isn't a priority for a lot of people. A lot of people do not buy a smartphone every three months like I do or every month. Sometimes I have I have like four or five phones in a month. You guys see me putting out the content. But the reason I'm doing that is because I would rather be the scapegoat and the guinea pig for you so you don't have to worry about buying it. So some of you guys I know do live vicariously through a lot of your favorite YouTubers. Um, if I'm if I'm one of your favorite YouTubers, I actually appreciate you. I try to respond to all comments. I try to do things like that. But it, when you ask me a question, and it's a legitimate question, I really try to respond. But to questions that are like V30 or V20, those comments are those comments like that. They don't really mean much to me because you're posting it in a way that you know. Come on, the phone's not out yet, or iPhone 8 or Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Some of those questions are posted just to draw attention to themselves. So. I kind of uh, I kind of avoid that, but if you're asking me a direct question and I know that I can help you, I'm gonna do my best to help you. I would even go so far as just buy it for you if it's within a certain price range. I've actually done that before. I just bought it and said, you know, here you go. I think we should. I, I try to do it, and some people, you know, people have actually complained about me giving away the things that I've gotten free. What the heck? Well, you didn't buy it, so you're not genuinely giving it away. What? <laughs> you know how much it costs to ship something nowadays? I shipped. Four, I shipped 20 cases or no, I shipped a whole bunch of shirts to people who wanted those ETE shirts. I went out of my way to try to get that done for you. I got it done. Can't get them for everybody. Those shirts came to almost $200 to ship. And all the other smartphones and cases and Bluetooth and stuff that I shipped off. This month, uh, I think I'm probably well over 200 Last month, I was over 200 Not that I'm trying to use that to take shots at people or say the customers don't, the people don't deserve it, but I'm all for the average consumer getting the best price. That's why I keep reviewing the K20, the phone that costs 40 bucks, the Moto E4, all these phones. And in the same sentence or a few sentences later, or a few paragraphs later, I'm talking about a phone that costs a thousand bucks. There's an audience for everybody. I and mean, there's a right phone for everybody. And they all cost different prices. Let me catch up on some of these comments here. Philip says, I only watch down to earth people. Yeah, you know, that's definitely what I would suggest you do. Uh, you can watch the big bloggers because I watch you. I, now, some people are going to say, well, Jay, you saying that because you hung out with the YouTubers and now that you have a bunch of YouTube subs, you're starting to hang out with all these YouTubers. Well, I actually talked to some of the YouTubers outside of YouTube already, so it's not a big deal. You know, we see each other in person. Hey, what up, man? And that's how it goes down. George, I've met George on multiple occasions. Uh, yeah, I'm a regular person, man. It's just that I'm on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that love, George. Uh, you know, sometimes I wish that my favorite YouTubers get together and make a YouTube network channel. That would actually, that's Eric, that would actually be, um, um, that would actually be fun. Uh, but it's a lot more difficult than you think, Eric, trust me, because a lot of people don't want to get involved. They don't want to be, they don't want to meet, you know, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Philip J is saying you too soft, man, the hugs. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, yeah, super generous and one. Man, uh, hey, Susan's here, guys. Hey, you know, Susan was here. <laughs> I was actually getting ready to send you another package, man. I got some stuff in that I'm not going to use, Susan. I was going to surprise you, but I won't surprise you now. And I'll just wait and not send it to you yet. And I'll just, uh, you'll just get a package one day. <laughs> but uh, so everybody said, what's up to Susan, man? I didn't even know she was here. Uh, but yeah, you know, when, when it comes to the quote-unquote right smartphone, is there a right smartphone? Of course it is. Is there a perfect smartphone? Of course it is. But... The perfect smartphone is not the iPhone 8 for Johnny. 
but it is for Jimmy. The iPhone 7 is perfect for Sally, but not for Sue. The Galaxy Note 7 is for Billy, but not for Bobby. It is, it is what it is. So there's a perfect smartphone out there. There's a right smartphone out there. It, one costs 900 one costs 90 It's just that simple. It is just that simple. There is a phone for everyone. And the reason this is important is because how do we... How do we use our smartphones now? We use it for everything. There, We use it for everything. Emails, um, calling your granddaughter, calling your son, calling your daughter, calling your wife, calling your sister, calling your brother, sending that photo at the snap of a man. Oh, I got to take this photo from my mom's. You know what I'm saying? I got to send this to my pops. It's something that you need your smartphone for. And there are smartphones out there that do more than other smartphones. Like, if BlackBerry were to come correct, if BlackBerry were to come correct, they could actually take on the Note. But see, BlackBerry doesn't have the vision of the drive anymore. They're too busy trying to be Android, which was a huge mistake in my opinion. The BlackBerry, uh, what's the name, just leaked out. I bet it's going to be running Android. The latest BlackBerry, you guys seen the leaks. I didn't post anything on it because I'm still upset with BlackBerry. <laughs> I want my BlackBerry OS device. But the BlackBerry, BlackBerry can compete and take on Samsung... And some people will get mad about that. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, Jay. That BlackBerry's dead. It's people with all these little silly comments like that that absolutely know nothing about the backside of what an OS should run like or what a, what, a, what productivity should be like. They can do it, man. LG can take on Samsung with a productivity device with some kind of pen or something, and BlackBerry can too. Apple can try it, but iOS is so boring on a on a um, on a phone. And I, I'm sorry, Apple users. Remember, I have them. I, I personally get bored with an iPhone within a matter of a month or a week, man. It's, I'm done with it, man. I get so bored with it. Ugh, it's hard to keep up. But imagine what my phone catalog looks like. I could take a picture of all my some of my, some of my phones laid out on the desk. You'd be like, oh snap! <laughs> Yo, oh my gosh, Jay, what are you doing? With all these phones. A lot of my, some of them I didn't pay for, but the majority of them I did. And I always disclose, you know, hey, I'll give it away. You'll know that some of the most of some of the smartphones I give away, I got them for free. I'll tell you, I got this free, or I pay for this, or it doesn't matter. You're getting it, or whatever. That's what it is. I want to hook somebody up. But the right smartphone for some people has a 5.3 inch display, and, and the other person has a 4.5 inch display or a 4 inch display. One controversial phone is the iPhone SE. When in reality, the iPhone SE is actually selling like hotcakes. The iPhone SE is selling like hotcakes. That is why Apple is still producing them. Let's be honest here, guys. You got to be crazy if you think the iPhone SE is not selling. Be realistic. The iPhone SE, oh, that thing is too small. Uh, this, listen, Apple is making a boatload of money off the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE has got to be one of, Apple, one of Apple's best-selling phones. And then they just dropped the price on it. They dropped the price down. That should make a few people mad because think about the people who just bought it. Ugh, that, would, that would really upset me. I, I would be a little perturbed by that. Wouldn't you? I'd, I'd be a little upset. I would. You can get a 128-gig iPhone SE. For four forty nine unlocked, that is a fantastic deal. As far as I sit, especially for a person who doesn't want a big phone and they want one of Apple's latest processors, uh, you know, it's just gonna. The cameras are still good. Come on, there's a lot to like about the iPhone SE. Say what you will about it, but that little phone is selling like hotcakes. That phone is only 450 for 128 gig. That's a fantastic deal. If you want a little phone, you want a little iPhone, but you still want iOS, iPhone SE. You know why that's a great deal? Because I paid 500 a pop for the 64 gigs when it first launched. There was no 128 gig model. Remember, there was 16 and 64. So I paid five hundred dollars for two sixty-four gigs. Eee, that's a thousand bucks for those two phones. Now I, for nine hundred dollars, I can get two one hundred twenty-eight gigs. 
And that's um that's that's the that's a part of you know you first adapters we get free stuff but we don't get the best deal. You 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 see what I'm saying? The iPhone SE is it's a nice you know and that's the unlocked version. If you go a little further, hit up Best Buy, and if you're on Cricket or AT and T, you can get that phone for 150 dollars for a 32 gig. That's 200 dollars off. It may be locked to Cricket, but we all know that AT and T phones can be unlocked for pennies on the dollar. We know this, so I would say if you're just really want you're really wanting um, let me see something here. If you're in the hotel room, way back. <laughs> you, you, Philip been watching me for a long time. Um, <laughs> when the house was getting renovated, I think. Uh, uh, let me see here. Some of these comments that you had to get this. Yeah, cameras. Yeah, the the cameras on the the iPhone SE are just sick. They're they're really good. I mean, we think about that. The hundred and fifty dollars for the AT and T prepaid version. If you got Cricket, pop your SIM card right in there. Pop it in. It's 199 on Verizon for the iPhone SE, the prepaid. They they even have the the um the iPhone 6 on AT&T prepaid for 199. That's another good deal because the iPhone 6 is still a very relevant phone. If you don't think so, hey, I respect your opinion on that, but I will beg to differ. I will beg to differ. There's a right phone, and there's a wrong phone. Now, I took I took a trip back in the day, and I took... Now, again, this is no shot at any phone. I took the Galaxy S7, I took the iPhone SE, and I took the LG G5. I had signal problems with the G5, and my battery kept dying on my S7. The iPhone SE pulled me through that trip. Now, granted, I had the other phones, and I was charging them up, but... I will plug my iPhone SE into the Escalade, and it it all, all my songs populate, and it appears on the dash. It was it was sweet. It was, it was what I wanted. The battery life on the iPhone SE is fantastic for me. It's pocketable. It's small in the hand. It's good, but that was a downside for me. It was too small. I like to watch a lot of content, and if I want to carry just one device, I don't know that I could do it with the iPhone SE for a long extended period of time. Only because of the screen size. And also, look how big my hands are, folks. Come on. Look how big my hands are. So that's another thing. But the iPhone SE, I guarantee you, it doesn't have a 4.9 rating for nothing. And that's not just Best Buy or or Apple. That's across the board. Lots of people love that phone. It's got a 4.9 on T-Mobile. It's got a 4.9 on AT&T. It's got a 4.9 on Virgin. It's got a 4... There's a people love the iPhone SE. We still have them here. People love them. How could you not love them? It's good, man. It's really good. There's a phone for everybody. What well, I topped out. I'm over an hour, folks. Um, I love chatting with you guys, man. I love doing the podcast. My apologies for not doing a podcast last Tuesday, but I did do a live stream uh, the other day. And I appreciate you guys' support, man. I'm going to remain humble. Uh, I'm going to remain this guy that I am because uh, uh, I want you guys to... I I wish I could meet some of you guys in person, you know, do a fan meetup or something like that. Not that you're a fan of me, but I'm a fan of you guys. And just sit down and talk. I'd buy you guys all lunch or something. Not to prove anything, but just to have fun. And, you know, let's talk about... If I could do a round table, that would be fantastic. Because I've actually met Susan in person. I met George in person. And if anybody else is in this stream, we hung out in person. Fantastic, man. Uh, Some of these people are really... People who see me... People who have seen me in person... People who have never seen me in person... You know, you might think, okay, this guy can't be like this. But you, you never know... What a person has been through in their lives to get them to this point. The older me, you wouldn't want to, the younger me, which is the old me, you don't want to know that person. Podcast didn't exist. This happy attitude didn't exist. The niceness didn't exist. So I'm grateful to be to have gone through all the stuff that I went through to get to this point. So you get the nice J Will. Because 
this person didn't exist back in the day. But I I continue to say thank you to you guys, man, because this is just a podcast. Um, but it's cool that we can hang out like this. I like doing the podcast sometimes over doing a YouTube live stream because the podcasts are laid back, relaxed. You don't have to see me. I don't have to see you. We can sit around in our our night clothes, lay on the bed, put the earphones in, and we can all chat right on our phones and just have fun. That's what it is. So I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Um, thanks for the guys and ladies and gentlemen who are able to join me live on the Tuesday podcast. Uh, I'm over 2,700 subscribers on, on my Spreaker now, so that's really good. Uh, and Spreaker isn't free, by the way, guys. <laughs> it's not Spreaker isn't Spreaker isn't free. You have to pay for it, and that's I do it because I really like I, I really like it, you know. And that's another reason why I started the podcast. Shout out to Forbes Tech because a lot of people say, Jay, I can't. I don't have YouTube Red, and you know I want to listen to it, but I just can't. I want to do the podcast for that reason. You can I leave it open so you can also leave my podcast open to where you can download them later. Uh, and that's what these podcasts are for, man. It's just to kick back and have fun, man. Let's kick back and have fun and talk about tech, and let's just have a good time. So shout out to everybody who's able to catch uh, all of the podcasts. If you caught, Susan said she caught 20 minutes of it, hit that replay and download it, Susan, and, and enjoy it again. I'm going to surprise you with a package, too. I'm not going to tell you when I'm sending it off. I got your address. I met Susan in person, man. She was super cool. Uh, and we hung out for a little bit, had a coffee. I, it was fantastic, man. So um, you guys are awesome, man. I'll see you next week. Obviously, you know I'm going to pump out a bunch of videos. I try to make the time for it. And, and <laughs> people say, well, what do you do? I'm like, man, I, I do have a life outside of YouTube, believe it or not. I just, my time management is really good. I know how to manage time. I can pump out 10 videos and push them all out. And you would think that I've been sitting in this computer all day. Nope. Not at all. So, you guys are awesome once again. It's your man, Jay Will. Is there a right phone out there? I say yes. I'll see you guys in the next podcast. Take care.